search arrestor. And the last H2O decoder we want to talk about is the search arrestor. As with any two-wire system, grounding on the H2O controller is incredibly important. And so you're going to need to ground the two-wire path with a search arrestor at key locations in the system to make sure that the two-wire path is grounded. Specifically, we're going to require search arresters in the following locations. First, somewhere within 25 feet of the controller, and then up and down the two-wire path, like at the end of every branch on the two-wire path that's 50 feet or greater, and then at least one grounding location every 600 feet, with additional grounding being recommended in high lightning areas. For instance, in Florida, we recommend having grounding every 300 feet along the two-wire path. And if you want to test the grounding on your two-wire path, we're looking for an earth to ground resistance of less than 25 ohms to go by the books. And really, if we can get less than 10 ohms, that's really what we're shooting for. So calculate how many grounding locations you'll need along your two-wire path. Then attach the surge arrestor decoder onto the two-wire path. Then use a split bolt connector to attach a surge arrestor to the number six bare copper wire and attach your number six bare copper wire to a grounding point, usually a grounding rod or grounding plate. And last but not least, we have the WeatherTrack surge arrestor. These are used at the grounding points. Part number WTW-H2O-SA. Again, on the back of the bag, we have the installation instructions and the wiring diagram, how to attach the surge suppressor both to the two-wire path and to the grounding device in the field, like the grounding rod. And then the warnings about using the proper wiring connections. And when we empty this out, we see we've got the proper wire nuts. And you'll have the WeatherTrack H2O surge arrestor decoder that has the red and the black wire that you'll attach to the two-wire path and the green wire that you'll run to a grounding source. And when choosing a good grounding location, make sure to select a location where your grounding source is far enough away from the two-wire path where the sphere of influence or the area where a grounding event would occur does not intersect with the two-wire path. So if you have an 8-foot grounding rod, the sphere of influence would be 8 feet in all direction off of that grounding rod. So we would want our two-wire path to sit further than 8 feet from where that electricity is going to ground and make sure it doesn't intersect with the two-wire path where it could pick back up and continue on down the line. And that brings us full circle as we've discussed the single station valve decoder, the two station valve decoder, the master valve decoder, the flow sensor decoder, the pump start decoder, and the surge arrestor decoder. On behalf of the whole HydroPoint team, I'm Ben Coffey saying thanks for your interest in HydroPoint H2O two-wire decoders. And if you have further questions, please contact us at support at hydropoint.com.